The Olden World, written by Tsar Yoshi. Chapter 629 An Inescapable Sin. It's been two months. Yeah? Valet rose from a shadowed floor in an enclosed room, a single lamp giving light to walls with exposed support ports and tacked up pictures of dignitaries. Is that a short time or a long time? We both remember each other. Her target lay on her back on a bed in the corner, half-dressed with the covers kicked aside and her mane splayed messily beneath her. Both. It doesn't matter. You remembered not to knock this time. Well, hey, you're welcome. Valet took two steps closer, a strip of light glowing under the door jamb to her back. So, let me see what else I remember. Your name is Crystal, you've been here for ages, worked for Maynef as a maid or something in Percival's Manor, are related to Chauncey, but both of you really hate each other and you go out of your way to be nasty or lifeless to anyone trying to show you a little sympathy. And you're pregnant. That about sum it up? Somehow, Crystal looked even more despondent than the last time Valet had seen her, emerald eyes dull and lifeless. Two months ago, when Valet first came to call, Crystal had been provocative in her listlessness, leading her on and frustrating her and distracting her from a goal. Finding out anything important about Chauncey from someone who was on bad terms with him. This time, Valet needed any information she could get a lot more badly and was prepared to be pushier and less gentle, but it hardly looked like Crystal needed it. In the bedside lamplight, dark stains traced the bad pony's face, evidence she had been crying. Before, her tailored maid uniform had been a tight fit, still wearable, and letting her pass for well-fed instead of pregnant. She still wore it, but was big enough now that it was unclosable, the front button only halfway down and left open around her belly. Crystal watched her unborn foal without blinking, staring through them with a look of helplessness, despair and loathing, silently rising and falling with her breaths. She didn't answer Valet's question. Just saying, we're both going to get annoyed if I make small talk, Valet warned, sidling over. Last piece offering right here. Need a shoulder? Because otherwise, I've got something I need. Take it, Crystal snarled, briefly heaving, looking as if any talking could send her off the deep end. Snaz! Valet grinned, stepped closer to the bed, reached over and grabbed Crystal in a big two-legged hug. Really wanted to do this last time, and I've got a lot less reservations now. Ugh! Crystal made an enraged choking sound, grabbed Valet back and sprang into motion. She was surprisingly strong. Or not, since she had exercise gear on her walls she apparently used, but still powerful enough to throw Valet into the air. But Valet was perfectly ready, twisting herself to alter the trajectory and managed to land both of them upright in the middle of the room before breaking the hug. She stepped back, grinning. Well, that got you out of bed. Crystal eyed her loathsomely, half-buttoned maid uniform hanging from her frame. What do... You. Want. Valet let a grin disappear, looking serious. So hey, you're either having the worst day, the worst year, or the worst life, period. And that really stinks. Last time, I kinda tried to be nice to you because it seemed like a cool thing to do and you threw it back in my face. So, this is a chance you really didn't ask for. Right now, I've got a beef with Chauncey, you've got a beef with Chauncey, and I was thinking we could help each other out. Crystal's loathing sparked in her eyes, then started to turn dull again. Oh no, Valet waggle a forehoof. Don't go listless on me or I'll hug you again. Your companionship is as temporary as it is well-meaning, Crystal whispered, turning her side to Valet and looking away. You have no help to offer me. Didn't you learn your lesson last time, fool? Valet frowned. You know, I don't know how much more you can ask for when you make a point of driving away any friendly faces. Yeah, sure, I'll probably bail once we're done with this talk, even though I could come back again if you like. Isn't that still a hundred times better than sitting in your bed thinking about dark things all the time? How much more can I ask for? 
Crystal flexed a wing, lifting the side of her uniform and showing off her belly. Use your brain. Yeah, you've got abandonment issues, fully side. That's what I'm getting from this? Let me guess, you had it bad, some dude came in and brightened your world, convinced you to give hoping for stuff a chance, said some stuff about forever, and then flaked out when you got to be too much work. Is that it? You don't know what you're talking about. Actually, I kinda do. The lady narrowed her eyes, stepping forward. I've got a real good friend who had exactly the same stuff happen to them. Worse even, except they had some even better friends who stuck with them and dedicated everything to them and helped them be happy about seeing another sunrise. Tell me, I don't know what I'm talking about. Crystal reluctantly met her eyes. I have love. I'm not lacking for love, she rasped. What I lack is a future. Your friend has a sunrise to look forward to? And she's nothing like me. Valet blinked, glancing down at Crystal's belly. Oh, I get it. You're, uh, you're worried you're not going to be able to take care of your foal. Oh, she blinked again. Bananas, yeah, if your lifestyle is like this, they're probably going to get packed off to the creepy orphanage. This is my true love's foal, Crystal whispered, lifting a hoof and massaging herself with the only care or gentleness Valet had ever seen from the mare. Bananas. Yeah, that makes sense. Valet kept her voice low, too, being more respectful now that Crystal was talking. So you do have someone just will lose your kid or something once they're born? Or is that someone gone and this is a last reminder? Mm. Crystal looked down, her natural coldness and apathy clashing with a wave of clearly recent emotion. Valet sat down on the edge of Crystal's bed, motioning for her to relax too. What was it you asked me if I could do last time again? Something ridiculously impossible, but, you know, I've actually got some friends who are really good at doing the impossible. If you don't tell me exactly what's up, there's not much I can do to help. Crystal gave her a baleful look. You're still trying to do that? I'll save my breath. You can't, and if you could, you wouldn't bother. Oh, yeah? Well, they raised an eyebrow. Prove it! Crystal scowled. That's what everyone else would say. Okay, Valet well, hummed, biting her lips. So, how about this? I've got an airship, or some good friends with an airship I live on. I don't see anyone here you care about except you're fool, you're definitely not cool with folks like Chauncey, and my friends are really, really nice. If you could make an effort to not be venomous to everyone who tries to help, you could probably come with us. You could have your kid, keep your kid, raise your kid, and we'd help you and keep food on the table and the whole place safe. Now, this is totally theoretical, but why couldn't we do that? You could, Crystal admitted, but you wouldn't. Ville folded her forelegs. Are you insulting my friend's hospitality, or... Saying you'd be such a jerk we'd stop putting up with you, because the latter's kind of your decision, and unless your faith in equity is absolutely zero, I'm pretty sure you don't know my friends better than I do. And you don't know me better than I do, Crystal countered. Or my problems. I'm more trouble than I'm worth. Yeah, well, maybe that's a good reason to tell me about your problems. Valet raised an eyebrow. And I don't know, there are a lot of ponies who would say you're worth a lot just by being alive. You're irrational, Crystal whispered, still standing. Either that or lying. I haven't done anything to help you. You have no grounds for helping me aside from wanting something in return. Once you get it, you won't care anymore because you don't understand true love. Vile briefly gritted her teeth. All right, I admit it. I want something. But that something is to know any dirty stuff about what Chauncey's up to because me and my friends are trying to do something about it. And if you hate him, that benefits us both. And you know what else I want? I used to be kind of a scumbag who made a lot of ponies really mad at me for a living. Then someone stupidly gave me way too many chances for no reason and it turned out to actually get my attention and turn things around. I want to see that work for other ponies, too, even if it's just to feel like I'm not an anomaly and that's how things work. Happy? Crystal watched her and sighed. I don't care anymore. 
You care about your kid? Valet pointed a wing at her belly. Tell me about your kid. Something seemed to crack in Crystal's demeanor, a single fresh tear running down her face. With a heavy breath, she stumped back to the bed, climbing on and passing within inches of Valet. She rolled onto her side, pulled a flap out of her uniform out of the way, and lay back, pointedly presenting herself. This is my true love's child, she whispered, reaching up and craning her neck around and nuzzling her taut coat. I love them. My life will be over when they're born. Valet folded her ears, but didn't press quite yet. How long is that? Another tear dripped from Crystal's cheek, landing on her belly. Two months. And what'll happen when they're born, Valet whispered, fighting back her sense of anticipation at finally getting somewhere. Crystal nuzzled herself harder, starting to shake with sobs. Valet stayed frozen, not about to be pushy while she was getting closer. She hadn't come here with the intention of this. She wanted to find Crystal, ask about her relationship to Chauncey, use some of that venom she remembered from last time to learn something useful about how to undermine or deal with the stallion. Yet here she was, in the same trap again. Maybe she saw herself in Crystal. Maybe she saw Maple. Maybe her conscience was just too big for its own good. Cerosians are under a curse, Crystal choked. The way we were created, we always be true. Our foals are always the same as our lovers. It is a brand, a sign of sinfulness. If I don't give mine up before they are known to be mine, Garshiva and the Night Mother will know that your lover isn't a bat, Valet trailed off, finishing for her. Oh, bananas. End of chapter 629